Hey guys, it's Dr. Greg Beeman from Everlasting Strength, and I'm here to give you today part three of our series, Dealing with Stress in Crazy Times. This week, we're going to talk about the mind. Let's start in with our verse. It's Romans 12, 2, and this is the goal of this little lesson here, renewing our mind. This is the goal, Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, what are we talking about here with renewing our mind? What do we mean? Well, first of all, it's changing the way that we think. We need to change the way that we think if we're going to have peace. We need to change what we think about if we're going to have peace from God in these crazy times. And last, we need, we need a change in the paradigm of our existence how we see the world, and how we react to it. So we're going to be looking at renewing our mind. How do we do that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to see that there's things that we do, and there's things that God does. We do our part, and He does His. So let's keep going, and let's get into it now. So our first verse for our part is Colossians 3, 1 through 3. Let me read it to you. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Now look at this. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Set your mind on things above. Well, what, what does that mean? What are we going to do? Well, that word set in the Greek there means to exercise your mind on heavenly, eternal things, to, to exercise, to practice. Think about exercising when you exercise for sports. It means to specifically dial in your mind to God and His will. It means to tune the channel into God, uh, to tune into Him, to turn your channel to His channel so that you are in tune with what He's doing and what He's telling you. And one of the best ways to do that is simply to read the Word, get into the Word of God, the Bible. So we need to set our mind on God, and that's how we're going to do it. We're going to get into the Word. Let's keep going. Now, look at this second part of the verse. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. These are some of the things that we talked about in lesson one. We said that you are not of this world, John 17, 17. We said that you are a citizen of heaven, Philippians 3, 20. So these are things we need to remember as we're switching our thoughts around. Let's keep going. Now, the next thing we need to do on our part is to meditate the mind. First, we were to set the mind. Now we need to meditate the mind. Let's read Philippians 4, 8 through 9. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. There it is right there. Meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. You see that God's starting to do his part once you do yours. So realize that Jesus is all of these things, the things that are true, noble, just, and lovely. Jesus is the word of God. He is the word of God. So we're to meditate in the word, meditate on the Lord and who he is, and we'll have some peace. Now let's keep going. Now, what I want to do here is show you what we mean by putting these two things together. So let's think of a, of a TV channel. We all do this. You have your remote in your hand, and what you're going to do is you're going to set your mind on God. Just like he said, set your mind on him, set your mind on things above. You're going to get in the Word, and you're then going to meditate your mind, staying on God's channel. You're going to select his channel, and you're going to stay on it, and you're going to meditate on it. The scriptures talk about this in Joshua 1 and in Psalm 1. Meditate on the word day and night. Now, in terms of God's part and our part, let's look at Proverbs 16, 3. This is one of my favorite verses. Commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Now listen. Commit your works to the Lord in prayer, saying, Lord, may your will be done in my life. Lord, I, I want to follow your will. Lord, establish my thoughts. I give you my life. I give you my works. And what it, Scripture says, 
is that the Lord will then establish your thoughts. It's like you've given him access. He'll give you your thoughts. And some of those thoughts, guys, will be thoughts of peace, exactly what we're, we're after. So let's keep going now. Let's look at Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So what we can see here is be anxious for nothing by prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. That means talking to God. That means making your requests known to him. That means praying to him. And then look what happens. It says that God will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Now that word guard there is a military term for a guard to stand guard and guard something. So God promises that if we will pray to him, make a request known to him, that he will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Jesus will stand guard of your heart and give you that peace that transcends all understanding. Now, let's keep going. 2 Timothy 1.7. Now, this is God's part. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Wow. That's, that's what we want, isn't it? That's the Holy Spirit that is in us. And this sound mind speaks of self-discipline, the ability to control ourselves, the ability to think right and do right. So what we need to understand here is that the power is in us. We just need to plug in. The power is there, guys. The power is in you to have peace, to do God's will. We just have to plug ourselves in. It's waiting. It's like throwing a light switch. You just have to plug yourself in and turn the switch on. It's already there. So let's do a summary now. Number one, set your mind. Number two, meditate your mind. Number three, let God establish your mind. Number four, let Jesus guard your mind. And number five, let God give you a sound mind. Now, let's end with this verse here. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 to 18. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Fix your eyes on the Lord and find almost instant peace. Fix your eyes on the things which are unseen because they are closer than you think they are. Guys, if you enjoyed this today, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel if it blessed you. I thank you and find peace in God by renewing your mind. Have a good day.